calm down. Everybody settle down. Let's get started. Welcome to the 42nd Annual Weekly Bluegrass Jam here at Possum Holler. I am your jam host, Tex Critter. And I'd like to start things off tonight with a little tune that I wrote somewhere in the neighborhood of G. You boys ready? This is a song that I made up, a fake made up song that I might end up singing all the time. Because I like the melody and chord progression and the words they already rhyme. Banjo solo! But I, I don't know this song. I, I just heard it. This is a bluegrass jam. Are you a bluegrass banjo player or not? Yeah? I, I mean, kind of. I mean, I, I like chords and stuff and Foggy Mountain Breakdown, the low part. Uh, listen here. You're in this jam circle. I just sang a song. A song I wrote nonetheless. It needs a banjo solo. It's not that hard. Listen to the melody. Add some rolls. Throw in some licks. You can do this. You're right. I can do this. I'm a banjo player. That's right. You're a banjo player. I'm a banjo player. I'm going to help you. I'm going to sing some different words this time. You listen, and then you play. You ready? Okay. Up to the root and then back down. The three to the root arpeggio to the three and the two over the five chord. And now we repeat the same thing for several measures and then a quick turn on the five. Play the melody banjo man. player you are a banjo player howdy welcome to banjo ben clark.com i am banjo ben with my buddy tex critter here on the site to teach you how to play guitar and mandolin but this week is banjo week and I have to say, this is one of those banjo lessons. I know I say it before, but it's true. It's one of those banjo lessons that, gosh, if I would have had this back when I was learning how to play, how much time and embarrassment and effort would it have saved me? Today, we're going to do a lesson called Make a Break. Now, if you've been taking my lessons in the past, you're familiar with Build a Breaks. And Build a Break is where we take a song that you know, we break it down to its basic melody, and then we learn how to add rolls and licks, and we... We learn how to build solos. This one's a step further in that we're going to take a song we don't know. And we're going to talk about actually how do we find the melody to a song that we're not familiar with. And then what do we do with it? Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I'd love to have you over on the website at BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member, have access to this lesson, hundreds more. But today we're going to work on our ears a lot. We're going to work on what, what are we listening to? How do we identify what key a song is in? How do we identify what chords are being played and what those melody notes are? And then what kind of roles are we supposed to put with that? Ah, how are you supposed to know that? And then what kind of licks would fit in there? Well, we're going to talk about all that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's jump right in. In this first video segment, we're going to talk about using our ears. And I want to walk you through the three basic steps that I do 
almost simultaneously when I'm hearing a song for the first time and I'm wanting to try to play a solo for it. These are things that you have to work on, that you have to practice, and they get better with time. Imagine that. So this is part of that practice, just slowing it down. And the three things are determine what key the song is in. And I'll give you a tip for how to pretty reliably do that um, in an easy way. Number two, we want to try to catch the chords that are being played. Are there any weird chords? Or are they pretty standard chords that are played in that key? And then number three, we want to sketch the melody. We just want to get a general idea of what the melody is doing. And then the more that we hear and the more that we play this song, the more times that we hear through it, the more refined that sketch will be. But even after listening through it one time, after you practice, you can have enough of that melody to interpret it on your instrument. Okay, and again, practice makes you better. So let's use the iPad here, and I wanna look at the tab, not for the sake of depending on the tab, but just so that we have a common resource that we can all look at here. And when we look at Texas song here, it starts with a little pickup there, and then it ends through here, and this is just a verse or just a chorus, um, and it lasts just 16 measures long. Um, we have to ask what key is it in. Now, one of the ways that you can determine what key it's in is to look at uh, what instruments are playing around you. So you, maybe you look at the guitar and you can tell, hey, the guitar is playing out of the key of G. Or same for banjo. They don't have a cable on. They're playing out of, out of a G position a lot. It's probably in the key of G. You can ask your neighbor in a jam what key is this song in. They'll be nice and tell you. Uh, if you have an instrument in your hand, it's even, even better. You can start playing through your chords and matching which chords um, match. Uh, but... Maybe you're still confused, and that's okay. Some songs are more difficult than others. And I want to give you an almost foolproof way of determining what key a song is in, and that's to wait for the last chord and the last note in the chorus. Or a song like this, it only has a verse. So the last note and chord in a verse. Let's look at that here. That's in measure 17. And if I had my guitar, my banjo in my lap, I could tell that that would be a G chord. Okay, so we're probably in the key of G. And then this note here, what note is that? Well, that's a G note on a banjo. And that is going to 99.9% .9 of the time in bluegrass music be the key that you're in. So whichever note it is. So uh, maybe you have to um, find on that G string a, where that last note of the song is, wherever you land, that's going to be the key that it's in that would determine if you need to capo and, and things of that nature. Okay, so we've determined that this song is in the key of G. Now what we can do is we can start looking at the chords. And, you know, whenever I'm sitting down at a jam, it is very difficult to hear a song being played through one time and then be expected to play a solo to it. I mean, text really put me under some pressure there, right? Um, usually, you're, you get a chance to hear through it two or three times before you take a solo on it. And that's very helpful. And I'm running all these things through my mind. It doesn't take me long to figure out what key it is. And then I'm, I'm, I'm trying to memorize somewhat of a chord chart, okay? And so the, the easiest way to do that is I'm watching what other people are playing, particularly guitar players. I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, I noticed that this particular song, and, and we'll chart this out, this particular song has three measures of G, and then it goes to a measure of C. So let me pull up a blank uh, sheet here and just do a little bit of um, Nashville number charting, but let's just start out with the with the number chords at first. I might say, well, okay, this thing's got three chords of G and then it goes to a C chord. All right. And then it goes to two chords of G and then it might go to two chords of D like this one does. And then you've got two chords or three chords of G and then to C and then it goes a quick D and then back to G. Okay. So again, there's 16 bars um, and that's kind of the chord formula. Now this is a pretty simple one and you can uh, commit that to memory pretty quick. And the cool thing about banjo anyway, is whenever you're playing in the key of G or of a G position, even if you're capable of playing out of a G position and you're just playing these normal chords, you've got a lot of freedom because um, you can even play your open strings over these chords and most of them will sound good. So now we have our key that we're playing in. We're playing the key of G. We've got our basic uh, chord progression. Um, doesn't have to be committed to memory, but the main thing I'm also looking for is, are there any like weird chords in it? Does it go to a minor? 
Does it go to a flat seven in the key of G? That would be an F chord. Uh, does it go to a two chord like the old home place? Would I go to an A major chord? And since I don't have any of those in there, I can kind of relax and know that, okay, it's just hanging out with G, C, and D. Not that big a deal. Um, even if I miss it, no big deal, right? And so I have those particular chords labeled here in this, um, in this tab. All right. Now, the next thing is probably the most important whenever it comes to actually playing the melody. And that is um, sketching the melody out in your mind. Now, I want to give you something a little bit abstract, okay? But uh, it, it works for me. And that is, I want to establish what that root note is in my mind, what it sounds like. It's pretty easy to do. Again, um, you're in the key of G, you just hum a G note and you find it with your instrument if you want. Hmm. And I like to, and that is a G note. Hmm. So I just want to um, kind of use that as a bass line and build my melody picture off of that. And I, I think in mathematical terms a lot. And those are the new words that Tex sang, right? He talks about going up to the root, going up to the three, to the one, two, to the one. He's just talking about the major scale in the key of G. Let's take a look at that on the tab and see what we're talking about here. He says here, up to the root, okay? So what he meant was the melody is gonna climb up to this G note. A da -da -bum. And that's something that I could do whenever I'm listening to a song. I'm going, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. and that's the first big melody note of that um, melody. And I want to make sure that I know where to start. It wouldn't make sense to start on a B note or a D note. Not on that big downbeat. I want to climb up to that root. And that's the first step. If the song started on a three or a five, then that's where I'd want to start. Like Foggy Mountain Breakdown starts on a five. Bum, 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 bum then that's where you need to be. But this particular song starts on the root, up to the root, and then it falls back down, right? Then it falls back down, back up to the root. And then it says, up to the three, down back to the root, arpeggi. Okay, arpeggios are the, um, at least just a regular major arpeggio, are the three notes that make up that particular chord. Okay, so the one, three, and the five. So a G major arpeggio would be a G note, a B note, a D note. That's the first tone of the scale, the third tone of the scale, and the fifth. And whenever Tex says arpeggio, he's saying you're climbing up one, three, five. Now, that's really simple on the banjo because that happens to be how it's tuned for the third, second, and first strings, right? But here's what I want you to look at. And I want you to try to see it. I'm going to draw it with a different color. Look what's happened here. Look at what the graph of the melody has done. Now, I don't have to know every particular stop on that melody. But what I can picture in my mind is this graph shape. At least generally, I know about big moves, but here I'm going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can remember that. Can't you remember that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another key is going to be, can we find that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on our instrument? I'm willing to bet that we can with practice. Let's go to the next line here. Now this one comes up to the five, to the top of that arpeggio, then comes back down to the three, to the three and the two. All right, so we're gonna hang there on the two. Now here's the important thing to remember when we're on the two is that our chord changes here, okay? So <clears throat> our chord here is a D chord. So this is important whenever we start playing our rolls uh, because so far we've been able to get away with mostly open strings rolling, but now we're over a D chord. So we need to think about which particular notes in a D chord are there. We'll talk about that in the next video. It's going to hang on the D. Dun bum bum back up to the root. And here's the big thing I want you to see. You see how Texas word says, and now we repeat the same thing for several measures. Okay, that's very key because so many songs do that. So many songs have first and third or second and fourth phrases that repeat one another. And that's very handy because that means you don't have anything new to learn, right? So you can just listen to that 
and um, commit that part to memory and then just repeat it over with. And that's what this song does. The, the, if you compare the tab of the first line and the third line of this song, it's exactly the same. Do, 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 do. Now we're just going to have a little different ending, aren't we? It's going to jump to a quick five. What do I mean by five? Now I don't mean... When, when Tex says, then a quick turn on the five, he's not talking about the fifth tone of the G scale um, as far as a melody note goes. He's talking about you turn around on the five chord, which is similar because whenever you think about the G major scale, G, A, B, C, D, so D is the fifth note, okay? And so when we talk about that in terms of chords, that means it's going to go to a D chord for a little while. And that's sure enough what it does here, right? It goes to a quick turn, just one measure over the D, and you see how the melody just goes, do, 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 do. How common is that? Just a little, little frill there around that major third. Ba, da, do, do. There's so much stuff that we can do there. And so after I've listened through this melody a couple times, I can begin to think about it in terms of what the landscape of that melody looks like. Bum 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 That's over a D chord. Bum bum bum. Now I'm going to repeat some stuff. Bum 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 bum. Quick turn over the five. Do 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 do. Okay. So after two or three times, I've got a really good idea of what that melody sounds like, and I could probably walk away from that jam session right then and whistle it. Well, guess what? If you can walk away from that jam session right then and you can whistle that melody. You got it licked, because what we're going to do next is we're going to find this melody on our instrument, and then we're going to learn how to put rolls in there that fit that, and then we're going to learn how to throw some licks in there to really spice it up. So if you're watching here on YouTube, I hope you've had fun. I have. Come on over, or Instagram or Facebook, wherever you're at. Come on over to the website. You can get the rest of this lesson, as well as the tabs and some MP3 jam tracks to practice along with. If you're watching here on the side as a GoPick member, scroll down to the next video lesson. Up to the root and then back down The three to the root arpeggio To the three and the two Over the five chord 